Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Hibs podcast, the Hibs Rambo, um, with me, Liam, uh, Craig and Michael. Uh, if you're thinking, sitting thinking to yourself, I've heard these guys before, it's because you probably have on Hibs Talk and Hibs Talk Extra Time. Um, but we are delighted to say that we have cut away, or cut all ties from Hibs Talk and started our own podcast. So I'll start with yourself, Craig. How How are you? Ah, good mate. Um, I think we should let everybody know it wasn't a uh, like an acrimonious departure. For Hibs talk, I just think that we wanted to. Obviously, we done extra time. The three of us combined last year and felt it was good to give the <clears throat> the Hibs talk boys their own sort of room and let us do our own thing. So, I think this is my eighth eighth year in the game, and I've still not got any better for the first time I've done it. An absolute veteran, an absolute yeah. veteran. Yeah, so I, there was no transfer request handed in uh, from ourselves at Hibs Talk. But um, Michael, how do you feel about uh, starting a new podcast with us two absolute idiots? Uh, very well. I, I, like most of the listeners, I'll be wondering what acrop- acrimonious means. <laughs> um, but I was pleased to do it for the one episode that I got, but then... I was obviously surplus to requirements with the hip stock going forward. So it's good that we've managed to move away and, and uh, be able to do our own thing whilst uh, they can do what they were doing as well. Yeah, for sure. And I think, um, like Craig says, we want to wish all the best to everyone at hip stock, uh, especially Gav, for giving us a platform um, in the first place to, to do this. Uh, for him, they're, they're a great podcast. Um, but now you've got another Hibs podcast. To but we're coming for you. Them. We're coming for them. <laughs> we're coming for those 6,000 um, followers eh? Followers on Twitter. But um, let's get straight into the meat and drink it, lads. Um, it's a season preview, 22-23. Um, like any season, it starts with some player movements. So firstly, I think we'll talk about the players that have come in. I've got them. I think I've got them all written down on my phone here. Stop me if uh, if I've not mentioned one. But I've got David Marshall, uh, Aidan McGeady, Kyle McClelland, Momo Bojang, uh, Jer Tavares, Eli Yuan, Cabraja, his first name escapes me, uh, Noan Kenny, Lewis Miller, um, and then technically Rocky and Ewan Henderson. I don't think I've missed anyone out. Um... But yeah, as a whole, what do you what are your opinions really on the the in the incomings really this summer, Craig? Um, I think some of it smacks of Ian Gordon just going on to football manager and hitting player search and seeing what he can find. But I think it's good in a way that the club have kind of expanded their horizons a wee bit. I mean, you, you often, I mean, it's can a year ago, folk were complaining, oh, is all we do is sign players for St Mirren or sign an ex-St Mirren players. And now that the club are actually looking a bit outside the box and trying to pick up these wee, these wee gems, I mean, we've seen how successful Celtic were for the J-League. <clears throat> so I think it's, it's, I still think we've no really addressed two key areas in the team in terms of centre-half and centre-midfield. But other than that, players like, obviously, McGeady and Marshall sort of bring a serious level of experience to the team, especially at the back line as well, that we maybe missed, you know, after yeah. Rocky left. Not to talk Macy down, but I think Marshall's pedigree speaks for itself. Yeah, I think uh, Yeah, I think you've hit the nail right on the head there, with the, especially with the experience thing. Michael, it's something that we didn't, really have an abundance last season was that kind of I mean I know we had Lewis Stevenson and, and Paul Hanlon but um, in terms of proper pedigree and experience in the game as a whole I think David Marshall and Aidan McGee they really bring that Yeah definitely I think Hibs for a long time have been guilty of being naive in a lot of situations especially big presser situations and we rely on experience and we only the only way we've all had experience is through players that we've never been able to get rid of. So 
to have David Marshall and Aidan McGeady, players that have played international level and have played Champions League, etc., uh, and they've had no real previous ties with Hibs, despite what Aidan McGeady tried to convince us in his interview. I know. Um, they've never had any real like, uh, ties with Hibs, so it's good to have them in for an outside. Plus, uh, what Craig says, it's good that even though some of the players won't be good enough and uh, we haven't heard uh, uh, some of them, it's good that we're not just buying into the SPL conveyor belt of players that just seem to go around all the clubs. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. No, I, for, for sure. I mean, looking at the players that we've brought in, I think for me, it's probably been the window which has been the most... And I don't want to say like it's a scattergun approach because obviously there's been a lot of um, thought and, and scouting going into these players, but it feels like they've kind of dipped in, dipped their toes in everywhere. Um, we kind of saw it in January with Melkerson and Hauga uh, coming in, dipping into that kind of Scandinavian market. But we've, I mean, we've gone to Africa, we've gone to Portugal, Croatia, um, and we might be going to Uruguay as well with... Uh, Joaquin Sosa being heavily linked by uh, by a, a couple of newspapers on Twitter. Craig, a, a, a young centre half who looks like he he can play a bit of ball. What did you think about um, that link? I think if you're signing anybody for that neck of the woods, they're likely to either be an absolute baller, an absolute nut job, or <laughs> sort of something in between. So I think based on, I mean, we can only go off what's been said, he seems like very much a, a tailor-made replacement for Paul Hamlin or even yeah. somebody that he can at least, you know, can at least learn off of Paul for the next, <clears throat> however, 18 or 24 months, you know, until, because, I mean, I've seen somewhere as well, it's potentially a club record fee. I think yeah. that might have, been, might have been Callum that said that. So I think as well, the club are not shy and splashing the cash now. And I think it's long overdue, but again, it, it needs to be quality rather than quantity. And if you look at the last two windows, we've signed about, what, 16, 17 players combined. Yeah. And you could argue that really only Marshall is a guaranteed starter. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them. I mean, maybe, maybe, what is it? Is it, is it Chabby wants to be called? Chabby, the, the left back. Is that his nickname? I think. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I mean, let's call him Chabby. Chabby, him, he'll be the obviously the sort of tailor made replacement for Doyle yeah. as well. So, I wonder and, if him coming in means that we'll see um, the deployment of Dimitri Mitchell a wee bit further up the park. I would think so. I would think he's more suited to. I mean, I only remember him for his because I know he's not really played that many games while we get injured, mm-hmm. but he's remembering him. At Hearts, yeah, was more of a an attacking wing back who was mm-hmm. a bit suspect defensively, a bit like in the Trent Alexander Arnold mold. Aye. Obviously, I'm not comparing him to Trent Alexander Arnold. I mean, they're worlds apart, universes apart, but in that kind of more modern, dynamic attacking fullback, you know, attacking first and defending coming as a secondary. So I think actually moving up the park is probably going to be beneficial to him and to the team as a whole because he gives us an extra dynamic and an extra bit of pace. Mm-hmm. But um, I, you said there about the amount of players that we brought in and Michael, I don't know about you, but it kind of, does it give you a bit of a flashback to when uh, Hearts were bringing in loads and loads and loads of players and most of them turned out to be, you know, utter gammon. Does it kind of give you the fear a wee bit that we're bringing this many players in? Well, it's like if you throw enough mud, some of it's going to stick, do you know what I mean? You're kind of hoping that a couple of them will turn out to be good, but you have to realise that if I sign 100 players, 90 of them are going to be shite. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, I, and I've not, I don't know what I'll Policy as I'm swearing, but I've just broke it. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but having said, I think it's it is good that we're we're trying to sign because you don't know if they're good until you, you until you buy them. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. But 
and it is good that we're, as I've said, that we're not just signing the same recycled players that just make a living out of going from club to club mm-hmm. that don't actually wouldn't actually progress us any further than where we are anyway. Like Lawrence Shankland. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not getting into that yet. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, my take on it, my two pens is that from from what I've seen and from the the majority of the players that we've that we've brought in, I think you know the on the whole they're young, they're hungry. Um, they might not be the finished article at the moment, but I think that they will come in and make this team better because we were in dire need of a really big rehaul. That's what we've got. Um, I just hope that, you know, if they have a shaky first couple of games, uh, you know, the fans didn't get on their back because it doesn't really help anyone. It doesn't help them play better and turn it makes the fans angrier because they're playing shite. You know what I mean? So I think... Just give them all a chance. Um, the vast majority of them have never played in Scottish football before, although um, you know, kind of similar leagues in England and in Portugal. But I think uh, give them all a chance. I think I think they will come good. Uh, never mind the never mind the players early on. The manager needs a chance as well. Like, yeah, and he's already up against it because of the the shambles of the league cup. Yeah, and the fact that before the end of the month, we'll play both Hearts and Rangers. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, is that the Rangers at Easter Road as well? Eh? Yeah, All but right. it's Hearts and Rangers first two home league games. Ah, right, so can win those two, and you, you probably can you, the fans are off his back for a yeah, season. They just forget it. So, but lose, especially losing against Hearts. I think he needs. We're never like like Michael was saying. We could have went down the route of looking at. Can the Declan Gallagher's and some of the release players for can who else who else left Aberdeen? David Bates, who's left Aberdeen the day. Can we could have easily went yeah. in the route of looking at players like that, Mark O'Hara, all the same names that you see playing for everybody. But going down this this route, I'd rather watch them and be shite, but be have a wee bit of character about them than be the same bland, boring. Yeah. Well, Scottish type of players that we see week in week out already. We need to think. We need to think back to when we, when we signed Martin Boyle, um, and we did a swap for Alex Harris. And when he first came in, he was, um, he was all pace, no end product, all fart and they shite really. Um, but you know we got behind him, we stuck with him, and we ended up shifting him for a few million quid. So. You could argue that but like Boyle probably would not last in a Hibs team than now. If he signed kind of if he signed now as he was back then. I mean you need to think yeah. he signed in what 2015. Mm-hmm. And it was really what four years, four and a bit years before he properly started producing to on, really. week in, week out. But yeah, I mean I think the the moral of the story is uh, just give the new boys and give the new manager a chance. Because you know, there's no use in changing the manager every six months, because uh, that's not going to get us anywhere. Um, but yeah, enough about transfers in. Let's talk about players out, and the notable ones really are Josh Doig and Paul McGinn. Uh, both have been mainstays in the in the Hibs team for well, Paul McGinn the last three seasons, three, uh, two and a half seasons, and Josh Doig the last couple of seasons. Uh, three million for Josh Doig and nothing for Paul McGinn. Um, are you happy for combined three million for the two of them, Craig? I'd like to hear your thoughts on Paul McGinn, um, because <laughs> I know you're a, a massive, massive Paul McGinn fan, and we're actually devastated. They went, nah, I'm only joking. Um, <laughs> I I think McGinn, especially with Lewis Miller coming, I wasn't really going to get a game. Mm-hmm. So I think it was good that. You know, if you take away this whole why did we announce he'd renew this contract only to get rid of him, that clause was initiated months months yeah. ago and Hibs just didn't announce it. The Doig thing, um, I think Hibs have done well 
to get as much as we have. Yeah, I think so too. But do you get this moment in time? Now, that's not to knock Josh as a player because I think he came into the Hibs team at probably the the best possible time for him with there being no crowds. Yeah. And it was only when the crowds came back that his, his performances maybe dipped a wee bit. But yeah. no, all the, all the best to him. I mean, can, in the space of what, three years, Craig Levine's effectively handed Hibs three million quid. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, <clears throat> I think three million for Josh Doig is has been terrific business from Hibs. Michael, um, do you think that the fact that we got three million is that uh, an indicator as to how the you know the rest of Europe and is valuing Scottish players now, especially Scottish left backs? You know, where you look at Aaron Hickey, who's done so well over in Italy, uh, Andy Robertson, Kieran Tierney. Do you think that those players have had then a knock-on effect to the value of, well, obviously Josh Doig, and then you look at Calvin Ramsey as well. Uh, possibly, possibly. There is a there's a thing called unconscious bias in the human psyche, right? Which basically means that if you have three good left backs, then the fourth one's going to be good. Yeah. Right? That's the sort of thinking. So I think there might be an element of that. I also think that it's good that Hibs have started to ask for more money, basically. And this mm. is what I, Aberdeen used to do a lot under McInnes, what they did was they would ask if teams were willing to pay three, four million pounds for a player down south that was of the same ability, they would come up and try and get them up here for 300,000, whereas yeah. Aberdeen would be saying, well, you're, if you played down south, you'd pay this, so this is what we want. Yeah. Now, the player might not be worth it, but that's what we want. You've got the money, we want that money for you. And they got good money for players that probably shouldn't have, but they just asked for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I do, I do think that the like you say is the the fact that Robertson and Tierney and quite a lot of Scottish players and even John McGinn do so well, and now in in the big five leagues, it's a, uh, I think it has upped our worth a bit, and you know that's only a good thing for not only Hibs but you look at the amount that Aberdeen got for Ramsey. What was it, five million or something they got for him? Seven or eight, was it? No, oh, was it as much as that? I think so. Was... They also got three, either two and a half or three million for Lewis Ferguson as well. Yeah, I know that Lewis Ferguson went for a, a bit less than Josh Doig, but I mean, I still but think that, I mean, that... that's I mean, if you look at the wider, that should be the, the selling point for Hibs now for young, for these, especially for these younger players that we're signing. Like, look at the you know, look at what's happened to Hickey and. The last what two years since he left Hearts, yeah, went out to see you know played in a <clears throat> played in an amazing league with an amazing lifestyle. Now he's got his move to the Premier League. You know Ferguson's made that move. Henderson's doing really well. Uh, yeah, completely forgot well. about Henderson. I was just know it's that. it's know that there's a you know before it would have been the typical path would be day well at Hibs and you might get picked up by a. Uh, a Bristol City, or, the old or a Middlesbrough, or an Ipswich, or an I. Whereas now there's more, you know, Hickey players like I Henderson. I think Hickey's Hickey. going to Henderson and Hickey have broke that mold, really, yeah. haven't they? And they've proven now that Scottish players can do it. And even Ryan Gold when he went to Sport in Lisbon. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I think we I think every Hibs fan, if you'd offered them at the start of the window, listen, you'll be three million pound richer, and Josh Doig will be away playing. His trade in Italy, I think everyone's everyone's happy to see him go there and further his career because it'd be different if he went to Rangers or Celtic or something like that. You know? But thankfully, he's he's away to Italy. It gives us another team to keep an eye on on the results and stuff. It's worked well for everyone. Exactly. Mm. But we'll need to do a, a Hibs ramble live from Verona. <laughs> yeah, we will. With, with Josh, with Josh as our guest. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We can get on the, the Peronis. No. So, moving swiftly on, lads. Um, we're, we need to talk about uh, pre-season uh, and the League Cup campaign, I'm afraid. As disappointing as it was, um, Craig, were you expecting us to get, you know, four wins out of four? I think everybody was, to be honest. 
Um, when you look at the the calibre of teams that were in the group, you know, Falkirk have been ridden rotten in the seaside leagues for the last couple of years. Morton have somehow managed to still meander about in the championship. Yeah. But I it was um, I think everybody expected four, four out of four. But I could kind of see when Johnson took over, he was already making noises about the fact the players were back too late. Yeah. And he said that at his uh, at his press conference when I was there. Mm-hmm. Um and made sort of reference to the fact that they would only maybe get 10, 12 sessions in with the players before the League Cup campaign started. Yeah. And I think you can see in his team selections the the way that he treated that. He can say otherwise, but he was treating it like a pre-season fixture schedule. Mm-hmm. And I think the only mistake he made was playing the Clyde team against Clyde and the Falkirk team against Falkirk. I think if he swaps them round, it yeah. could have been it could have been different. Well, that's what I was going to say, Michael. You look at the Clyde result and five zip up inside the first half. Are you thinking at that point we're going to piss the group and you know we're going to just well, we're going to be thinking about who we're getting in the next round. I think we were all thinking prior to the Clyde game that we were going to push the group and just the fact that we were so comfortably ahead mm-hmm. after 40 minutes or whatever was just sort of reaffirming whatever they thought rather than made you think that we were going to do it. I don't think folk went into that game thinking we're going to struggle here, like in this group. I think... Yep. And then just the fact that we did what we did to Clyde just proved to us at the time that we were like on track for where we wanted to be. Yeah. Uh, in hindsight, I think I just wonder how bad are Clyde. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because we absolutely dismantled them, and then we, well, apart from Bonnerig, we struggled against the other two teams in the group. Yeah. Um, I think with Lee Johnson can say what he likes but at the end of the day we should be winning those games I think so Res- irrespective of, of whether our players are up to full match fitness or not Do you think that the second half against Clyde and I know that we're 5 nil up and you know there's not really much appetite to then go on and Score another three, four goals. Do you think the second half against Clyde then set the tone for the game against Falkirk? Did you do you think that maybe Lee Johnson thought, I mean, this is Falkirk, another team that's dwelling in the bottom, the the bottom half of you know Scottish football. It's it's going to be a case of turn up and we'll get the three points. Craig, I think I think. Oh, sorry. I think that there was definitely an element of that. I think that's just typical of the sort of lower league in England attitude to Scottish football. Mm-hmm. Um I I don't I think a lot of Hibs fans going there that night thought it was going to be a, a hard game. Uh, yeah. especially with the plastic pitch. And we don't really have a great record there either. No, we struggled, pl- we struggled there with better teams. And yeah. the plastic pitch Hibs is always a neutraliser against Hibs because we can't seem to play on them. Uh, Parker Nilkerson. Uh, and, well, and Haug. <laughs> He's a wee uh, uh, um, but on another, But having said that, on another night, we could have won that game 3 or 4 1. I think in the so. Second half, especially with uh, Henderson's hit the post. Um, Dodge missed an open goal. Yeah, and this other, chance and right at the end we, as well. Aye, we just and we just bombarded the box for forty five minutes, but we just couldn't score. Yeah, but Craig, despite the results in the League Cup and the performance, you know against Morton, are are you worried? 
No, because we're still not up to full personnel. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm know, not worried got, either. So our, effectively our starting left back, our main striker, and you can argue whether he's whether Kyle McGuinness is a you know an integral part of the team or no. And then Paul Hanlon, you've still got four players missing. Yep. That arguably walk into the strongest team. At Did the you moment. see Kevin Nisbet? Okay, so main stri- aye, striker Kevin Nisbet. Because mm. we don't really know what to expect from Ellie Yuan yet. He could turn it to be an absolute baller. He could turn it to be a Steve Pino. We don't know. Yeah, I think he's got a bit, you know. I think he looks like it. Um, but we just, again, it's it's. I think I'd be feeling a lot more confident if we didn't have all these injuries. Yeah, still piling up. I mean, I know Paul's wasn't serious, but he seems to be getting more of these wee niggly ones as he's getting older. I think the um, the problem with Paul Hanlon was that he he just kept playing through it and playing through it and ended yeah. up making it worse, which is a shame because you know he's he's obviously a good player. He's I think people give him a lot of stick. I've been guilty of giving Paul Hanlon stick, but you can definitely see when he's not in the team, he has missed. Um, he's not the the best centre half we've ever had at Hibs. He's not. Uh, he's you know he's not unreal, but I think we do miss him when he's not in the team. I think, although it doesn't really seem that he's an out and out leader, I think he does an awful lot to help the other defenders through the game, especially Josh yep. Doig and well Ryan Porteous when he was younger. No, I, I agree. And when you when you factor in that you know three players through the spine of the team in terms of Hanlon, McGuinness, and Nisbet are still out. Yep, it is going to take time. And you've got even to the extent of like Darren McGregor now sort of being effectively, you know the the captain of the development side. That's mm-hmm. again taking another option. Yeah, so another you know leader within the dressing room out. Now we can argue all day until the cows come home about McGregor's ability as he's gotten older. But I don't think it can be argued what he offers the team off the field. Yeah. And no, when, you, when you take him out of the mix as well, you know, it is going to take time. So I'm no I'm no worried. I mean, if we get off to a stinker and we didn't win any of our first dozen games, eh, half a dozen games, then then probably the the alarm bells will start ringing, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wet my pants over the league cup at yeah. this moment in time. Although it is disappointing, that it's one of the the competitions that we can win. You know, one of only two. I would rather that Johnson seen these type of performances now with still enough time in the yeah. window to correct them rather than see them in September, October, you know, starting with a false sense of security. Mm, and I think and, uh, I think Liam Liam Fogger, he said that on Twitter, that he, he's glad that this has happened early. But I mean, I suppose time will tell. But Michael, I'll ask you the exact same question. Are you worried? I think it's definitely a cause for concern. This, um, this soon? Well, we can only lose the games that we've played. I suppose you're right. Eh? Do you know what I mean? Like, you can pair how we played against Clyde, or even uh, to a sort of lesser extent, the games in Portugal, the reaction of fans uh, after those games. And then the Falkirk one uh, was shocking. Um mm-hmm. Beat Boyerig, but to be honest, if if we never won that game, then he could have been sacked there and then. To be honest, <laughs> um, and then Morton as well. I mean, I know you, I know we got beaten penalties, but we we should have they should have been out of sight. As I well. think. Do you think that? I I know that we never had everyone available. There was obviously the work permit situations, injury situations. Do you think that 
Lee Johnson was treating these as games to get to know who fits where in game situations more than him picking, you know, like getting it tactically wrong. I, I know what you I know what you're asking. I think that he thought he could get away with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I suppose we we all thought that. I mean, you could probably uh, pick any team, any eleven yeah. of the players that we've got, and you would expect them to go out and beat Clyde mm-hmm. and Bonnie Rigg and Morton and Falkirk. You would expect that. Uh, um, I and think pro- he's just been really naive Aye. with that, and expected that the. I mean, going with a back, effectively that sort of three triangle at the back of McClellan, Bushiri, and. The Browski away to Falkirk is a big, is a no-no for me. Like, can even, you swap one of them out to start for Portress and it changes. You swap yeah. the Browski for Marshall, it changes. Mm-hmm. Putting three of them together. And then obviously with Miller, no really setting the heather alight either. Stevenson hasn't had a great pre, you know, didn't have a great, sort of, a great game that day either. It just immediately adds... Yeah, even more pressure, and I think it's. I do think it is a bit of naivety. He should, you know, if he it, says he's looked into the history, he should have seen the recent history with Hibs and Falkirk to know that that was going to be a tough fixture. Aye, regardless of what league leagues were in, and I think naivety, there, yeah. Uh, no, I do think naivety, yeah, to a point, but I mean, he's, he's no daft, he's managed what 450 odd games more than that in management. Across, you know, various different clubs in England. The last thing it should be is naive. I think maybe give him the benefit of the doubt. Obviously, it's his first managerial job up here, and it's different to how it is down there. Obviously, the competitive action starts a lot earlier. But I think I think I'm in the same boat as you, Craig. Is that yeah? It's not the best that we've been knocked out the cup, but I mean. I think it's it's not for me a huge cause for concern at the moment. I don't think. I think, I think it's so. more of an annoyance at how yeah often we've been, like how often we've been at hand in recently. I know we've not always been successful, but yeah, I think we all enjoy it. Kind of whenever kind of it gets to that time, it's everybody on Twitter and social media is like, oh, better get the hand in season ticket. Out. Okay, we, we can't but, really say that this season. But we also we've been knocked out of the league cup by lower league opposition before the league has even started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get, and it's just, like, I get that. And it's like, it's not like it was a one-off game that we got beaten. Like, if we were shite and we just got beat on the night, we've, it's out of four games, we've won two of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, uh, with going back to what you were discussing as well, with the players being out injured, I think, well, I certainly think anyway that Kyle McGuinness, we just need to believe him when he comes back if he's coming back I think we need to plan with him because he's mm-hmm. been out injured for 10 months and unless you used to are privy to something that I don't know I don't actually know what's wrong with him I thought it was his ankle yeah I've, I've not got a clue I think but he's I think just one so of these many... players who's been so unlucky with injury uh, he's, mean, he's, can... had, he's had two cruciates I think already and yeah. he's only but I mean I'd, I've told you this before Liam I've seen him at open goal which was October last year, I think. And he a said week, it was back. A week before week. the international break, and he said, "I'll be back after the international break." And I, I think, don't think, I don't think it helps Hibs either, where there's all the smoke and mirrors about them. And then it yeah. leads to, I mean, you remember this happened years ago with Callum Booth when Callum Booth was at the team, and it led to rumours that he was an alcoholic, mm-hmm. but they had no substance whatsoever. Now. <clears throat> Granted, I don't think that we should be privy to anybody's medical information. However, I think to either give the fans a wee bit of a lift or just to manage expectations a wee bit, just say just an, an update. update on an update on Kel McGuinness. He's now resumed light jogging. He's... Did they know? Did they know do that last season though? Would Jack did Jack Cross not come out and say they expected him back in November? No, and then we never heard anything again. Because that'll, that'll tie in with what you got told at Open Goal. Aye. I, I, think told just, October. I think he's just the unluckiest guy in the world. I think it's one of the ones now where it's where it's upstairs. 
Aye. That there's that many injuries that you there's there'll, there'll be that I think it's only natural there'll be that bit of self doubt that he thinks if he turns a certain way is his knee going to go again is his ankle going to go again because mm-hmm. um, there's no doubt and I mean we've seen it <clears throat> you know when we signed him it was a bit like what have we signed this boy for and then the start of last season he started like a train he was excellent yeah away at Motherwell he you know dragged us back in the game in Croatia before McGregor was sent off. Uh, the was it St Mirren or Dundee Easter Road I think as well, where he had a really he scored. Um, but I, I do I think we need to we need to plan we need with to it. We need to plan with it on I. Yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. However, I'd rather we didn't because in those glimpses <clears> last season it we've was seen what an impact we've seen what impact they could have. Bye. Talking about planning with them. And looking ahead to the rest of the season, um, we'll just do a quick wee, a quick wee season, a season prediction, a wee season preview. Um, I've been thinking about it quite a lot uh, about where we're going to finish. I'd like to, uh, and I'd love to say, oh, we'll be up there, we'll be third, we'll be whatever. I think we're probably looking staring down the barrel. It's a transition season. I think we'll be looking at. I think we'll be lucky to get top six. But for me, um, if I had to, if I had to pick a spot where I think we'll finish, I think we'd be lucky to get fifth. What do you think, Greg? I think I think we'll finish top four. You think? I uh, like last season. I mean, look at how shite we were, and we weren't that far away. Yeah, but I mean, and Aberdeen have strengthened, Dundee United have strengthened. Hearts, Hearts, I mean, Hearts. That, but Hearts, Hearts only finished where they did last season because of Craig Gordon. And they'll finish third again this season because of Craig Gordon. No, I don't think they will. I, I think it's as as we showed last season. It's hard to. Maintain that, and I'm not going to start shitting my pants about them signing players like Alan Forrest and Lauren Shanklin. Like, I don't, I just, I just, I don't see them being able to cope with the schedule of European football, especially with the early cut off because of the World Cup. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're basically going to be playing Thursday, Sunday every week until Christmas. Until Christmas, and. You see, even Celtic and Rangers struggle with that when they're in Europe. Mm-hmm. And Hearts haven't got either, Hearts the, got neither, the squad. neither the squad depth nor the the quality to be able to manage. And compete in both tournaments, yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I, get, I get what Aberdeen, you're saying. Aberdeen, I don't rate Goodman, uh, Goodwin sorry, at all. And if Dundee United are going to be anything like what we were under Jack Ross at times, all you need to do is get an early goal and sit off them. <laughs> yeah, fair play. But so I think I think I'm I'm going to be probably derided for it. But I'm I'm thinking top four because I don't think there's any way that we can be as shite as we were last season. What do you think, Michael? I think eight, we can only eight. improve. Oh, I'm eight. leaving. Uh... <laughs> right, we'll we'll move on for Michael's prediction. <laughs> now, based, what... based on based on what I've seen. Is, is this eighth in League One or eighth in the Premiership? Eighth in the league we'll be playing on. <laughs> Are we doing cup prediction as well? Ah, oh, go on then. Right, quarter final. Get beat at rugby part and penalties. <laughs> right, we'll win the cup, eh? Semi final beating off Jack Ross is done you think? <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to bite us. We are Stephen Fletcher heater in the eighty third minute. <laughs> yeah. Um We'll look ahead to uh, top goal scorers. Who do you think will finish top goal scorer, Fabs? Um, you and Henderson. I mean, you could have said Paul McGinn, but <laughs> he'd probably be up there if he was still at Hibs. You and Henderson. Henderson's got the potential to hit double figures, I think, at least. I think if um, he's deployed in the right in the right areas, he'll definitely score a lot of goals. How many has he got? Is it, what, three or four? Four, four already, I think. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's a good got the, player. He's got, uh, you'd like to think McGeady will be capable of getting near 
double figures. Um, yeah, Melkerson. I think Melkerson, Melkerson will be up there. I Hopefully, think Yuan as well. As but, I mean, you think if you can get if you can get you know just close to double figures out of the five players alone, you're almost at fifty goals, and that's yeah. that's what we missed last season. I mean, Doyle got injured. Doyle got injured right at the start of the season, and between him, Boyle, and Nisbet, the season before they had Strictly over 50, 50 goal contributions between the three of them. Yeah, something mental like that. Eh? Yeah, but no, I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm the same as you, Michael. I think Melkerson coming off of the flank is going to get him a lot more involved on a week-to-week basis. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it will suit him a little bit more because when Maloney was playing him up front by cell, I mean, oh, I don't think if Doidge and Nisbet were fit, Melkerson wouldn't have got the game time that he did last season. We wouldn't but, have um, seen him. No, but I think him coming off the left and the fact that he's bulked up so much yep. uh, over the summer, um, I think he's... He's ready to come back, and he's had that half season experience playing against these Scottish teams. And I'm got my fingers and toes crossed that hopefully he'll he'll uh, he'll hit quite a few goals this season. And you can see it; he's he's definitely got the ability. There's kind of a part of me that hopes he doesn't. He just so but didn't see any push for the hot dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't be I can't be bothered with that guy. <laughs> he's an absolute yeah. man. But yeah, Milkerson, you think as well. Yeah, I do. Um, for the reasons you mentioned. Oh well, I mean, you uh, you should be hosting, and you should be <laughs> letting me talk. But uh, just quickly before we move on to St Johnston, Player of the Year, take, and a sentence why. One sentence why. Player of the Player of the Year will be David Marshall. Because he he will be our Craig Gordon this season. Fair enough. Michael? And our club captain, if things are to be believed. Well, not according to Ryland yesterday. So. Since then. Well, who, right. who, do you, who do you think, Michael? Uh, I think Ewan Henderson. Why is that? I, f- I think because I think he's one of the few shining lights of the League Cup campaign. Um, I think that he's he's going to be an asset for us this year. Um, I think that he's definitely one of the more exciting players. Like I kind of feel that it, I've not really felt like since we had McGinn, McGee, and Arn, like when they had the ball, you were quite excited as to what they were going to do. Yeah, and you always always sort of felt safe when they had the ball. As well, that like you never felt like they were going to give it away. Um, so I think he'll he'll be an exciting player for us. I think he'll score quite a few goals. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm going to go for him. That was the longest sentence I've ever heard in my life. Sorry, I never <laughs> realised it was maybe why. Sorry. <laughs> I think uh, I think our player is going to be Tavares or Tavares. I, I'm not hundred percent on how you pronounce it. Uh, I'm on the fence, but he's either going to be a wonder kid or absolutely shite. I'm, I'm fully backing him because his hair is superb, and I, I quite like Benfica as well. So takes me I'm, back. You'll be too him. young for it, but takes me back to the Jimmy Buckle wig. Takes me back to Bob Marley, mate. So it takes me back to. But yeah, so moving on, St John's on Saturday, we're all going uh, to cheer on the lads. Um, separately. Yeah, separately, yes. <laughs> Can't deal with the stink of Craig's breath. So thank God he's sitting down at the front and I'll be behind, not having to smell it. Uh, the, I think the, the biggest news before Saturday is the work permits of Cabraja and Eli Yuan. Do you both think that both of them will start? Left back, aye. Chab, I'm just going to call him Chabby because I think his nickname's Chabraya. I think that's how you pronounce it. Is it Chabraya? I've been saying Cabraja yes. this whole time. Uh, I think there's probably an accent over the sea or something. That... Chabby. So Even I'll... if he doesn't go by that name, that's what we'll I think we should just we should just call him Chabby anyway. Chabby. Um, Chabby no, I think I think Doidge is probably a mere shout to, to start on Saturday. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised. 
What do you think, Michael? Um, I, it wouldn't surprise me if none of them played. It also wouldn't surprise me if they both played. And it also would not surprise me if only one of them played. <laughs> Covering <laughs> cover all bases, I like to see <laughs> uh, I'd like I'd like to see the left back play. I don't think Yuan will play though. I think he'll be on the bench. Um, it's not an a great place for them to make their debut. The way like no. like no, no. Park pitches are. It's not. It's not a great place. Full stop. And yeah. then you, the, the only support a positive you. You take it as it looks like we're going to have a, a very healthy support. Which only means yeah. one thing. <laughs> the, a fucking Dre Wright, Melkor Halberg and Jamie Murphy masterclass. In, well, in it's funny that you should say that, Craig, because I've got all three of their, of their names down on my notes here. Do you think that letting go of Dre Wright, Melkor Halberg and Jamie Murphy is going to come back and bite us in the arse on Saturday? Because it usually does. I think it will. I think for one of them, I mean, <clears throat> Murphy and Wright, I don't think, but Halberg, Halberg sort of fell into the Slivka category for me where he never really done much. You could see there was here, a player but, there, but... But never really got a chance mm-hmm. that much to show what he could do. Nah, you're right. Um, but other than that, I mean, they've, they've lost Alexander Clark, who was a massive player for them. I, I actually wouldn't be surprised to see them bite the bullet and go down. I think they're going to be slugging it out with a shite of St Mirren. Yeah, I think... Go down this year. I think if last season's anything to go by, they, they probably will struggle. Um, but I mean, I, I mean, it's guaranteed they're going to get three points against us on Saturday. Three ex-hibbies, a full hib support. First day of the season. It's got it written all over it, Michael, eh? Absolutely, we've been here before, um, <laughs> and we've all returned. <laughs> With uh, open arms, the players getting I, booed off at a full time. <laughs> can he wait? I think I just it's just got it all over it. Eh? It just does. I mean, especially with Jamie Murphy and Jamie Murphy, especially because he never tried a tried a leg for a lot of the time he was at Hibs. I never thought. Um, Dre Wright. I didn't actually mind him. I thought he got a lot of unjust criticism. I just think he wasn't good enough for where we wanted to go. Yeah. Um, and Halberg, I actually quite liked Halberg. I think that he didn't get much of a chance and I think that he was dropped for players quite consistently over players that were cons- consistently not actually very good and needed drop. But mm-hmm. Halberg never seemed to be the one to replace them. So, yeah. I, I agree think with that. Andy Considine will score and we'll get beat 1 0. <laughs> and he'll, start and he'll, the celebrate by, <laughs> he'll celebrate by putting his finger in his mouth. But, Craig, um, just really, really quickly, rattle through your ideal starting 11 with all that's available <clears throat> Marshall, Cadden, Pochis, Rocky, Chabria, Kenna, JDH, Henderson. McGeady, Melkerson, Yuan. Ideal for me. Michael? The exact same thing. I think I would probably go with the exact same team as well. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's uh, I, I mean, mean, I think on paper, it's itself. probably the, probably the strongest based, team. Maybe, uh, based maybe on... uh, Tavares and for McGeady, if you want, if you fancy him, but. I think it depended on if Cadden's available as well because I know he had the uh, he had a mm-hmm. tight hammy last week. Yeah, and I will say if any player at Hibs gets beat by a one-on-one with Jamie Murphy, regardless of when they were signed, they should be immediately put in the transfer list. Send them to the Cat and Dog Home. I am exactly. But yes, so predictions, Craig. See no Hibs. <laughs> Yes, and we've been hooked in, we've been reeled in, and we're ready for a season to go. Michael, what's your score prediction? More realistically, um, <laughs> one, one each. One each. Yeah. I think we'll win 2 0, 
and we'll be bouncing off of that uh, for a week, and then we might get brought back down here on Sunday. But I'm yeah, just starting off at the bottom. To be fair, expect disappointment, and you're not going to get disappointed, are you? Correct. No, you still you still get disappointed. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes the disappointment outweighs the expected disappointment. Fair enough. Fair enough, lads. Quite prophetic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Indeed. And uh, obviously we're all going on Saturday, um, which leads us on to our final our final topic before we wrap up today, um, which is uh, the Cinch Pymiership table. Craig, uh, you and I discussed this quite a lot on Hibstock Extra Time back in the day last season. Michael, yep. I'm not too sure if we discussed it together, but... Um, it's uh, essentially a table ranking the pies of grounds in Scotland uh, that will be visiting in the in the Cinch Premiership, um, and you know it's had a bit of an overhaul. It's not just a firm rating out of ten. It's got four different categories this time, lads, and those categories are out of five. So it's a overall score of twenty out of five for temperature, out of five for filling, out of five for the pastry and out of five for the value for money. He's all in agreement yeah. with that. Do you think that that's, that's fine? That they're fine. good deciding factors? I think temperature we need to discuss because some might like it but hang scalding in. hot, but some might like it. Yeah, I think, I, think you, I think you describe your rating plus your re- a reason as to why yeah. I feel that. Because if it's scalding hot and you, you have it, then you're not going to enjoy it if it burns the tongue off you, yeah? I've actually got a wee story to, about this from okay. our guests at McDermott Park from last season. Got one of the uh, the, the chorizo pie. Can't remember what else oh, was on yeah. it. Um, it was absolutely scalding hot. I, didn't, I actually thought it was going to like, burn to death. Um, the layer of the pie collapsed. Oh, that happened to mine as well. So I was left with the like the, the the wee tray thing that it comes in. Mm-hmm. The tray capsized on me when I got a shock um, <laughs> from the from the heat, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it ended up on the back, like the neck of the person in front of me. Oh no! So oh. I uh, turned and ran away. Apologize. Had to apologize. That's one of these stories that Justin starts Johnson. off bad and you don't think it could get any worse, but it actually gets <laughs> progressively worse. <laughs> Sensational. So, well, uh, Michael, you did say off air that you are not too much of a pie eater. I wonder if that story no, has no. got anything to do with it, but um, we will be rating the pies that we have at away grounds. Uh, I've also included Hibs um, yeah. on this uh, pie membership table as well because they're not getting away with changing the catering and not having it reviewed. So but that um, is obviously a mortgage pending to be able having, to afford that pie. Have, road these having days. Say, I'm, I'm going to correct you there, Liam. I do like pies, but I don't particularly like giving other football clubs money. So uh, if this podcast does get a little bit successful, perhaps we could set up a Patreon page to <laughs> donate to the pies for this segment. Buy um, me a pie. Uh-huh. But... Uh, so I just had to... <laughs> Passion. So we'll obviously we'll kick that off next week with our um, rating for the pies at McDermott Park. I'm not holding out an awful lot of hope because my pie last season at McDermott Park was shite. Um, but you know that means that there's always room for improvement, and that uh, brings us to an end of episode number one. Lads, how are you feeling? Hungry. Hungry. Glad to be here. Looking forward to seeing what the what the future holds. Got a big year ahead of us, so for it's sure, important, it's important that we that we knuckle down on and focus for the for the next week ahead. Really, absolutely, and just take every episode as it comes. Are you exactly. talking about Hibs on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I'll whatever leave it up fits, to you. Whatever fits, mate. Well, but no, yeah, it's, it's been, been uh, good. yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, and um, we'll catch up. We've not quite decided. What uh, what day is going to be a recording day, everyone? So um, bear with us because we'll just see what happens. We'll roll with the punches. 
we're not going to make promises that our asses can't cash. But we, we will we will be here all season long talking absolute drivel about the abs. Can all promise season. you that. So yeah, thanks, uh, thanks Craig for joining me, and thanks Michael for joining me. And uh, remember to follow us on the socials at the Hibs Ramble. I nearly said at HFC Talk there. That was <laughs> that would have been just, a mistake. We just did. So <laughs> we can go and follow at HFC Talk as well. If you want. I'm <laughs> go and follow them as well, but make sure to follow at the Hibs Ramble. Um, and thanks everyone for listening to episode number one. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye.